Hello and welcome, it's Dr. Red Prism here again, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the second step of aerobic respiration, which is uh, the link reaction. So at the link reaction. The link reaction. Right, okay, so what, what happens in this link reaction then? So you obviously start off with your pyruvate, which is your product of um, glycolysis, which is the first step in aerobic respiration. Um, and you go to an intermediate compound known as acetate, and then you end up with a compound known as acetyl coenzyme A, which again is another type of coenzyme. I mentioned in the first step of glycolysis, I don't know if you remember, but in that video, cast your minds back, I mentioned NAD, which is also another a different type of coenzyme. You know, it's no structure of coenzymes or where they come from in too much detail for A level. You might well for, for degree, but I'll go into that a little bit later in a, in a more advanced video. Um, okay, so prove it, it's a free carbon molecule. Acetate is a two carbon, and acetylcholine is a two carbon. Now I wrote out the carbons as well in the last video. The reason why they're so important to write out is because then you can keep track of where carbon dioxides are lost. So you know in this step that there's going to be a CO2 lost because it's got carbon in it, and you know that they've lost the carbon between there and there. Because doesn't that a genius to work out that two is less than three? Um, and the other thing that happens here, which you just need to remember really, is another NAD is reduced, which is obviously a type of coenzyme um, to reduce NAD through the addition of, of hydrogen, which is which is reduction. Um, and between acetate and acetylcholine A, there's something which goes in known as coenzyme A, which also makes sense if you think about it, because coenzyme A plus acetate is going to be acetylcholine A. Um, and there's nothing else that happens here, and we can check this because we know that that's two carbon, that's two carbon. So we know that there's no there's no carbon that's, that's actually been it's actually been lost, but like between these two steps. Okay, so, so so this is pretty much it for your link reaction. It's a it's a very short reaction. Um, the the other thing is where do these products go? I should probably draw you a table actually where the products go. So you have formed another reduced NAD, which goes to oxidative phosphorylation, which if you remember I mentioned that last time, um, that's the final stage of aerobic respiration. Um, this is, I'll try two up here to prevent any, any sort of any doubt or confusion in your mind. This is definitely the, the second step of um, aerobic respiration, and the first step being glycolysis of course. This is the fourth step, oxidative phosphorylation, so that you produce an energy from this reaction takes part in the fourth step which is oxidative phosphorylation and um, you, you also get acetylcholine A out of this which acetylcholine A, I'll write down for you again is used in the next step which is known as the Krebs cycle so right, Krebs cycle and number three here and um, okay so that's pretty much all your products apart from CO2, CO2 carbon dioxide is just released as a waste product the other thing that's quite interesting about this reaction is, is there's no actual energy production. You've probably noticed that the absence of ATPs and stuff, there's no energy production in this step, but there will, there will be quite a significant amount in the next step, which knows the Krebs cycle, which I'll talk about in the next video. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and hope it's, it's informed you. I hope, hope you've actually learned exactly what the link reaction is and how it works now. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.